So in the previous video, we considered individually the special case of having a wide sense stationary input random process and the case of having a time invariant linear system. What we're going to do in this set of charts is we're going to consider these conditions jointly. So we're going to consider the special case where we are wide sense stationary on the input random process and we have a time invariant linear system. So if you recall, back when we did the wide sense stationary case, we ended up with this kind of simplified expression for the cross correlation function between y and x. It was equal to this integral expression and it basically looked like a convolution integral on this second coordinate. So let's take this expression which was good for wide sense stationary inputs and arbitrary linear systems and specialize it for also having a time invariant linear system. So what happens between this line and this line, since our system is now time invariant, we no longer have a two-dimensional impulse response, we have a one-dimensional impulse response. So instead of t comma s minus alpha, we can replace that with t minus the quantity s minus alpha, which turns into t minus s plus alpha. So this expression here is good for wide sense stationary inputs and time invariant systems. And note that this cross correlation function, we're writing it as if it's a function of t and s, but over here on this side now, now that we've assumed time invariant, the only place that we see t and s are right here, and it's just t minus s. So this really isn't a two dimensional time function, it's really a single one dimensional function, and it's a function of the difference in time. So instead of writing r sub y comma x of t comma s, we can write it as r sub y comma x t minus s. It's just a function of the time difference. And if we wanted to, we could even call this time difference t minus s tau if we wanted, just like we always do when we deal with autocorrelation functions of wide sense stationary random processes. So for this joint case, we get this simplified expression. It's really r y x comma tau is equal to integral from minus infinity to infinity of h of tau plus alpha r x of alpha d alpha. So let's go ahead and take a look at that and simplify that a little. So let's go ahead and simplify that expression that we ended up with on the previous chart. We had the integral from minus infinity to infinity of h of t plus alpha r x of alpha. Let's rewrite this just a little bit and we'll get a much simplified expression. I'm going to let z equal negative alpha. So from this line to this line, I'm going to do a change of variables. And it's very similar to the change of variables we've done in the last two videos. If z is equal to a negative alpha, instead of having alpha here, I have negative z. Instead of having alpha here, I have negative z. That means that dz is equal to a negative d alpha. So that's why I get a minus sign here and a dz here. When alpha was equal to a positive infinity, that means that z is equal to a negative infinity. And when alpha was equal to a negative infinity, that means z is equal to a positive infinity. So I end up with this integral right here. So note that I have the autocorrelation function evaluated at a negative z, but autocorrelation functions are always even functions. So instead of writing rx of negative z, I can replace that with rx of z. I haven't done anything there. And then from this line to this line, we're just using our basic calculus. The negative of an integral from b to a is equal to the integral from a to b. So I've just let the negative sign flip the integrand limits, and I end up with this expression here. And if I wanted to, I could flip out and go back to some dummy variable alpha. I don't really need to because it's looking at this. We can tell what's going on here. This is just convolution. This is convolution of h with the autocorrelation function. So for the special case of wide sense stationary input and a time invariant system, my cross correlation function is just the convolution of my impulse response with my input autocorrelation function. This is very similar to the result that we had when we considered just the case of a wide sense stationary input and arbitrary system. But remember there, we still ended up with a convolution, but this component was still two dimensional. It was for some fixed time t, we could do a convolution on the second time dimension of h. Now, since this is a time invariant system and this function is just one dimensional, we end up with a more conventional looking convolution expression here. It really is just a one dimensional function h convolved with a one dimensional function r of x. So if you want to, you could put h of t here, rx of t, h of tau convolved with rx of tau. That'd be the correct way to write it, seeing that I'm using taus over here. So the cross correlation function ry of x simplifies quite a bit. 
The second thing that we did in our last video is we considered just the case of time invariant. And if you remember, we ended up with kind of this double integral expression, double integral h of alpha, h of beta, and then we still had an autocorrelation function that was two-dimensional because we did not assume anything about the random process. So let's use this as our starting point. If you go compare this to the exact equation we came up with last time, I think I interchanged the use of alpha and beta. So I think it was like t minus beta s minus alpha or something like that, but those are just dummy variables essentially. It uh, doesn't really change the main result. Its form looked exactly like this. If we now assume, in addition to being time invariant, that we're also a wide sense stationary input, we know how that simplifies the autocorrelation function. Instead of a two-dimensional time function, we can write it as the difference between the first time coordinate and the second time coordinate. So from here to here, I replace t minus alpha comma s minus beta with t minus alpha minus the quantity s minus beta. So after you distribute the negative sign, it turns into minus s plus beta. So I'll end up with this double integral expression right here. Again, notice on the left here, we're saying that the output autocorrelation function is a two-dimensional time function of t and s. But over here on the right, the only spots that I see t and s are right here. And we see that it's only a function of the time difference t minus s. So again, instead of writing r of t comma s, I could write it as a single dimensional function t minus s or r sub y of tau. Okay, so this is a one-dimensional time function, again, for the special case of being wide sense stationary and time invariant. So just like before, let's consider this ry of tau. Let's replace t minus s with the quantity tau and do a little bit more simplification. We'll do that on the next chart. So this is now ry of tau, and I have tau plus beta minus alpha right here. So this first line follows directly from the last line of the previous chart. From this first line to the second line, what am I doing? I'm going to rearrange things just a little bit. These are very much um, separable. I can bring the beta terms this way and do my beta integration last. And I'm going to put all the alpha terms in this interior integral. Okay, So I haven't really changed anything, just rearranged and grouped things a little bit differently, which is totally allowed. And now look what I have right here. I have the integral from minus infinity to infinity, h of alpha, times the autocorrelation function of x, at tau plus b minus alpha. If you go back a couple of slides, this right here is very, very similar to an expression that we had for the cross-correlation function if we evaluate our cross-correlation function at time tau plus beta. So this right here is actually the autocorrelation function at time tau plus beta. So from line two to line three, that's what I've done. I've replaced this integral with what it's equal to, the autocorrelation function at time tau plus beta. And now we're really close to having a final expression for our autocorrelation function. At this point, we have the autocorrelation function of y at time tau is equal to this single integral expression. What we're going to do now is we're going to work on that integral expression, um, doing some math on the board, and we'll wrap up solving for a compact autocorrelation function expression for that integral. So we'll do that in the next video.